Hey guys, welcome to a new video on Tip Gullet channel. And in this video, I'm gonna explain you everything you need to know about D-pad tactics. I know a lot of you guys probably don't know about D-pad tactics or don't use it but know about it, but it could definitely make a difference because you can give your players instructions well, you don't need to pass the game. So it could be pretty surprising sometimes for your opponent. And you also have deeper tactics in defense, which are really important to become a good defender in the AFC 24. So let's first talk about all the options. First of all, there are eight different options when it comes to D-pad tactics. Once you press your D-pad arrow down, there are four different options, which are offside trap. You perform the offside trap by pressing your D-pad arrow down two times. Then next up, we have overload ball side, something I can already tell, don't use this. Avoid to use that because it is draining your player's stamina and it's not good at all. But if you wanna know how to perform it, you perform by pressing your D-pad arrow down and then to the right. Next up, we have team press. I have to say team press this year isn't really effective Effective. Me personally, I would rather press a pause for that and go for constant press in your tactics. But you perform that by pressing your D-pad arrow down and then to the left. This will make all your players push up on the pitch and try to press your opponent. A situation where this can be useful. For example, it's a 75th minute or 80th, your opponent has a goal kick and you didn't install your press tactics, which I always recommend. Make sure to have one tactic where you have constant pressure but then you have team press it is for a bit of a short time your players try to press your opponent and me personally i noticed it isn't working that well this year last but not least something i always use is strike and drop back you perform strike and drop back by pressing your deep arrow down and then up as you can her striker drop back says it itself. It will make your strikers drop back more. So it will be more compact in defense. And obviously that's what we want. Then the next four options are if you press your deep and arrow up. The first one is up and down, which will be extra striker. Me personally, I've never used this. It should mean that one of your center backs goes up front but I don't really think this happens. So me personally, I just avoid this. The next up we have up and to the right, which is hug sideline. I think that is really, really useful this year because if you play a formation with only fullbacks, for example, the 4 3 2 1, your fullbacks will hug the sideline, which makes it way easier to build up and to find them in the overlap. Once you are building up, you obviously want to create the run with your fullbacks in that formation, and they will always be on the sideline. So they will create a lot of width in your attack. Then you also have attacking fullbacks, which you perform by pressing your deep arrow up. And to the left, this means you basically put your uh, fullbacks on join the attack, which you can also do in the instructions. But obviously, as I mentioned, it's really important to do this in game as well, because it could be really surprising for your opponent because you're not pressing a pass, but somehow your fullbacks went from staying back to being pushed up all the time. And your opponent maybe thinks, hey, he didn't press a pass. How did he make this tactical change? So that's something that could be really effective. And then the last option is get in the box. I only turn this on when I just need to go all out attack. All my players need to go forward. I'm probably losing, chasing a game by one or two goals. 10, 15 minutes left. I just put them and get into the box. Any other situation that that, I would not recommend to use this. Then let's talk about the most important ones. For me, the most important one is the offside trap. The offside trap is a dangerous one as well because this really makes you a good defender or a bad defender in the AFC 24. If you mistime this, you will allow your opponents to have a lot of chances out of nowhere. If you practice this and master it, it will make you an insane defender in the AFC 24. This won't allow your opponent to reach a box easy. For example, if he passes back, you pull off a side trap. That makes your last line push up higher, which will make it harder for him to break you down. And every time your opponent is turning back or passing back, just make use of this. Obviously not to the halfway line, but as you can see in these clips, every time he goes back, I put off side trap so my defense not goes too low. Then the other two really important for me are hook sideline and attacking fullbacks. These are really good in the combination as well. As I mentioned before, fullbacks are really important in this year's game. I think especially if you play a 4-3-2-1, they are maybe the most important players in that formation. And when they hook the sideline and go high up, so you play them on hook the sideline and attacking fullbacks, they will be high up on the sideline every time. So the switch will be open every single time. And this makes it so hard for your opponent to defend because you can just switch to the side and you will get into a 2 v one situation on the wing every single time. I think you guys now know the most important things about the D-pad tactics. 
make sure to just try try them out. I would really recommend practice on the offside traps because that can really make you a good defender in the AFC 24. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you want. Let me know what kind of video you want to see next. Then all that's left, I want to say ciao. See you guys next time.